Well, good morning. It is, uh, what is it? It's Tuesday, Tuesday morning, the 24th or 5th or something. We seed it till a little after two in the morning because we wanted to get that done. So our peas are all in. We've been using the flexi coil, that 1050 tank with the seed master. That still doesn't work. New Holland doesn't even know what's wrong with the tank. So it probably won't work again this year. Uh, I guess luckily enough, we only have 300 acres or so, 350 acres left to seed two quarters of barley and about 50 acres of of uh, oats so i'm gonna grab this truck right now i gotta run over there's a little bit of oats left in it i'm gonna unload that into the new holland tank that doesn't even work just to get it off the truck then we gotta clean it out fill it with seed barley and this the fertilizer that's in that truck i'm gonna unload into our fertilizer truck and then we can get then we can get going we're going to uh so the one quarter we're going to seed is right close to the yard here, just on the other side of the trees. We're going to start there. That's our plan anyways. Uh, we're going to seed as much as we can of that today because we are calling for rain. And we don't want to spend all this time moving north of town because that's like, I don't know, seven miles away or something. So it's really not far by big farmer standards. Some guys travel like 50 miles, but <clears throat> it's far for us. We don't want to waste that time. It's our farthest field away, so we don't want to waste the time. Time, time, time. So I'm going to get this stuff all ready to rock and roll, and then go from there. Oh, and this is the process of unloading. So if you have uh, too much seed or fertilizer in your tank or something, you just actually swing the auger around that you used to fill it with, and it slides right up under there. So, kind of okay. It is a bit cumbersome to move that auger around, but this sure beats the heck out of climbing in there with a pail or something. Another thing a guy wants to make sure when you're doing this, do it in the field. So when you spill a little bit of fertilizer and stuff, it's not a total waste. The, uh, I mean, if you spill too much, it'll just burn in one spot, but kick it around with your foot after. Uh, this drill, when it was acting up, I had it in the yard, and every time I started the tractor and put power to the tank, those meters would start turning. So it was plugged up several times, and then I, uh, I had to clean it out in front of the shop and then blow out all the hoses and everything. So pretty much looks like I seeded my yard, or at least the, the road or, or the spot in front of the shop is oats and canola and fertilizer all over. And at today's grain prices and uh, fertilizer prices and seed prices, it's like the most expensive parking area ever right now. And it's, uh, it's the most colorful one too. White and blue and yellow and all sorts of things. The sun is not shining today. We've had a good run, I can't, I can't deny that. Uh, if this drill hadn't let us down, we would have been done by now. But such is life. I'm just, I'm just so thankful that we kept that flexi coil. We would have uh, been sitting for like four days now. Where with that flexi coil, between yesterday and the day before, we seeded 550 acres, or sorry, 530 acres of peas with it. So, it's going pretty good. Well, holy smokes, coming to you live from Blue, the tractor got the seed master going again seeding my oats this might be the longest 70 acres i've ever seeded uh, we had geared everything up there's still peas on the other truck there's barley on another truck there's fertilizer on another truck so dad brought me a bag of oats i only got a round or two left then i got to go back down by the lake where this original software glitch started to plague me uh, the mechanic dude he just left did a software update and uh seating ever since so hopefully fingers crossed that was the issue well good morning it is may may 26th dad's getting the barley truck here gonna fill up the drill we just emptied the oats out all these patches around my yard this is from my drill when it was acting up and it did it again this morning as soon as i turn it on it's the meters start turning so it's still not 100%, but I did seed the 50 acres of oats with it yesterday, so I'm going to take it north of town and give it another try. 
hopefully we get the day with it. If not, we'll be back to the old flexi coil. And uh, yeah, there's we got there's piles all over there, and there's piles everywhere from trying to figure this thing out. I plugged her up good a couple times in the yard because once the meters turn, if the fan isn't running, you just fill your uh, manifold up, and then you gotta get the air gun and the vacuum and everything else to get her going. So. Well, we have arrived here north of town, just finished the outside rounds, gonna top up. And uh, as luck would have it, when I went to calibrate my drill when I got over here, the meter started turning, so that means the problem wasn't fixed. Uh, I did unplug some stuff and I got going enough to do the outside rounds. And when I got going on the outside rounds, meter one and two were going, and then all of a sudden, me or sorry, meter one and three were going, and all of a sudden, meter two just turned itself on and started to take rate away from the other two. So I came back here. This was kind of one of the last things we were gonna try this meter calibration button. So when you uh, when you want to calibrate, you just hold this button and the meters turn. And I think what was happening now is this was somehow letting power through it. So it would just randomly turn all three on into calibration mode, which would explain why it was stealing rate from the other ones. But I got it unplugged now and things seem to be working. Fortunately for me, my brother's in town and he's gonna pick up that part. And uh, I mean, we can run with it off, but I don't think you can calibrate the drill without the button. Well, I had to get Dad and Old Yeller to save the day. I left home this morning. I had, I thought I had half a tank of fuel. I thought that would be more than enough for me to finish this quarter. Obviously, I was sleep deprived last night or whatever yesterday. Although it was kind of an early evening, so I'm not sure where that comes from. And uh, I, I, I was down to, I was down to in the yellow. So the light never come on, but I was down to in the yellow, and I don't think that's. Uh, <clears throat> don't need a runner quite on E. And then the other news, since everything was fixed and I unplugged this and I unplugged that and things seem to be working good, my fan speed drops off on going down the field. So I'll be driving along and my fan speed will just, it will just tank. It'll go right in the, in the dumps. And uh, for the first however many times that happened, I would, uh, Pull the drill out of the ground and make a big loop. And then by the time I got looped around, it would be back up to 4,700 RPM. It doesn't need to be there. That's yet again, my attempt at solving a problem with my very limited expertise. I turned the flow up because I thought maybe that was it. Uh, but anyways, I uh, messaged the tech again because that was another good thing about him riding around with me for a round. He actually got to see that happen and he's like, oh wow, that's weird. You lost the hydraulic to your fan. And you don't lose them all together, it just drops down to about 2,000, 2,500 RPM, which if you kept running it like that, you would uh, you plug your drill. It doesn't have enough airflow to move the seat through. So I messaged him and I said, yeah, you know what you saw the other day, it's happening an awful lot today. And he said, okay, well, that's really not a problem. Um, do your best to try to get done seating. And then he said, there's a T valve with some, a T with some ball valves in it and they could actually be sticking. Uh, the one thing he said, I'm only using three out of four hydraulic remotes. This blue one isn't used for anything. So uh, he said, if you're going down the field and it happens because if you just cycle this one that you're not using, it might provide enough flow that it straightens itself back out again. So. We're gonna give that a go. It's so intermittent. It happened a lot about four or five rounds ago, and now it's, I made two or three rounds without it happening, so. I don't know why all this stuff has to happen on potentially the last day of seating, but it does, and it just drives the old ticker nuts. You just, you're just on edge thinking like, just hold together. Five more rounds and we're done. But we'll see. We'll cross our fingers and uh, knock on wood and do all those other superstitions. We're, uh, what are we, uh, we're 10, 10 rounds away from being done. Well, it is about 6.30, 6 o'clock, I guess. Beautiful evening. 
And you got a little miss up there. She's helping me. We uh, we had a round and a half left. Sorry, a pass and a half, like half a round basically left. And we ran out of fertilizer. So uh, Corey went to town, which is actually only right there. So like a mile. So we're very lucky on this field from the fertilizer plant kind of a neat one to finish out on because if you run out you can run back just run back to get half a ton and of course we're going to try to get that last wet spot of the year good evening it's uh, a little after seven and uh spring seeding 2022 for uh our farm is done. I just finished the last quarter north of town. Had a bit of a disaster with that. We finally got the drill going. Then my hydraulics on my tractor are acting up. <coughs> I did talk to that tape mechanic that was out and helped me get the, uh, the tank going. And he gave me a couple ideas of a couple of uh, P valve type things under the tractor that I could take apart, clean up, have a look at, see if they're sticking or something like that. So that'll be a project going forward. Uh, I don't remember what Corey said. We were at 10 or 10, 11 days of seeding. So pretty good, I guess. Uh, where I just was, was actually quite wet. And, uh, so we had a couple days where we, where we didn't get to do much seeding. Uh, this drill was down for three days. All in all, I think we did pretty good. So unfortunately I didn't get, uh, I don't know, as much uh, videoing as I thought a guy would get, but there's only so much, only so much from the cab of the track that you can do too. Uh, fortunately, we didn't have any major, major breakdowns. We had uh, one hydraulic hose on this tractor that runs from the front to the back. That was actually a pretty easy fix. We had a couple hoses to fix on the tank. One other thing I got to do: the drill fill auger. I had taken that off last year in the summer after the last season, and took it up to the dealer and had them fix the seals in it because it was leaking. And uh, I didn't try it again, I just picked it up a couple months later from them and uh, put it back on and stuck the tank in the shed. And uh, right away, this, this year it was leaking right away, just like it was last year. So I don't know if they just billed me and they didn't actually even work on it, or if whoever worked on it, they put it together and broke the new seal. But I do have a new seal kit, so tomorrow between climbing under blue here and taking those that T-valve and that load cell valve or whatever out, I gotta do that. I wanna try to get this tractor and drill obviously ready for next season. Uh, we're expecting about three days of rain coming starting tonight, so couldn't have finished at a better time. Uh, and uh, So that'll give me some time in the shop to fix that hydraulic motor and have a look at this tractor. I'm also very tired. We had a couple long nights when we fired up our flexi coil. Uh, long nights early mornings we did about 700 acres with that drill and uh, that was a that was a lifesaver so if we didn't have that drill for the three days this drill was down we would be 700 acres behind and there'd be rain coming up and it's already the 26th of May so we would have definitely been pushed into June and possibly not even get some of our quarters seeded so we probably won't be the flexi coil will probably no longer be on the market. We'll just keep it and uh, use it as a second drill for if this one breaks down or if we have the help. So, as always, though, to everybody that was watching, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, stay tuned for the uh, growing season now. Uh, spraying season will be here in a week or two, and uh, more bag making. The house is coming up. Uh, I haven't put anything on the house. They got the the basement everything is done they've been framing it upstairs walls so roof should be going on here soon uh, we'll soon soon have a house so hopefully you uh, enjoy your weekend here and uh, we'll see you all on the next one <laughs>